may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you leave your prayer request in the bottom. Right now the mood throughout the community is everybody's flustered, confused, Kmart shoppers don't know where they're going. But let me tell you something, there's a lot going on underneath everything. The one thing I've learned in my many years of working for the Lord is always trust Him. Now, He put them big signs up in the sky for a reason. So don't, don't take your eyes off the ball. Okay? Because in these days, with everything that's happening, He was warning. Now, I knew going into this, that this could definitely be a warning. That something suddenly will appear after Neith after all this stuff happens. He was warning us about the UN meeting. It was also in Thessalonians 5, 2 and 5, 3, where Paul was actually talking about this week that just passed. But he also said something else that nobody's took into consideration, brothers and sisters. I've been studying these passages for the past four to five months. When they finally got here, and I knew that they was on their approach, I was still surprised when it happened. Now, what a lot of channels are not talking to you about is the next verse. Then sudden destruction will come upon them. That is the next passage that we're headed to. With what happened up in the sky with her with child, and the child is still, that still doesn't wrap up to the 22nd. Now, Brother Bob did a great program yesterday. We're going to put that at the end of this. Talking to you about a Jubilee year. We are in the Jubilee year. I had to look into it. More stuff I did not know. But he does a good job at explaining it to you. So we're going to do Bob Barber at the end. So he can explain the Jubilees and Atonement and everything else for you. He did a very good job. And there's a little bonus material at the end for him that he's going to put out. So... We're going to put it here on this video. I think it was very important for him to do that. But the most important thing out of all this that's happening is Israel being divided. That's what the whole main discussion of the UN was, peace and safety, peace and safety, peace and safety. And we know when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. Yesterday, Joe Biden came out and said that Israel will be divided. And the United States is going to play a major part in it, dividing and making two states. Netanyahu is still here. Greer, which is the defense minister of Israel, has quit within the last hour. You heard me correct. Him and his people have quit and stepped down. Israel's falling apart. And it's literally falling apart right before our eyes, which I kind of knew that was going to happen just by scripture. Because Netanyahu will take the deal. If not, some, he'll be removed and somebody will. But it will happen. And God already warned what will happen to those who divide the land. And that includes America. That's why America is not mentioned in the last days. Because it will no longer be. Now people today cannot, under, they cannot grasp that thought. But it will no longer be a country. God will completely wipe it off the planet. It won't be here. And don't think he can't do it, because he can, in a blink of an eye. He's done it before. He's completely erased Sodom and Gomorrah. And it can be done to this country also. And it will be. 
if they decide to help, and that's what Biden said, they're going to make sure that this deal goes through, that there will be two states, and that puts America in God's crosshairs. Now, I told you, when all this stuff happens, it will be sudden. I've seen it myself. It's a very sudden a thing, and let me tell you something. Let's say that we are here in October. It's a very dark time. I've seen that. Every dream I've had of October, God has warned me of a very dark time in America. Starting, it's about to come. That means that the rapture is very close. And we could go right before this disaster happens. And I believe that's the case because that's what I've seen here. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like in your state, but I can tell you what it looks like in West Virginia when it happens. It's a stormy day, and all chaos ensues. Like I said, we saw the EMP. happens on a sunny day. Then all of a sudden, these storms roll in, and that's when the rapture takes place. I've been looking for these conditions, and they have not happened yet. I don't know what it will look like where you are, but what I'm trying to tell you, is do not take your eyes off the ball. Right now is a very important time. Now, we didn't know exactly what would happen on Feast of Trumpets. We wanted it to be the rapture, but it's now turned into a warning of what's to come very shortly. What came out of the UN during this moment was the dividing of Israel. And that is also more news of the rapture imminent. And we kind of figured that when we started seeing them wanting to do it as a side project during this events. Now, we can look around the world and see all these events. The Pope comes out today and says nuclear war is imminent. I could already told you that without him. I could have told you that months ago, literally, because it is imminent. God's give us plenty of warnings. And I have sent those warnings to you and you to other people. Now, they can either go with the warnings or not, but the warnings are real. What's about to take place upon this planet is very real. And it's going to be very sudden. Last night, an 8.2 magnitude CME come off the sun. This has been going on, but now are getting worse and worse and worse. The earth is heating up like we've never seen before. There are storms like we've never seen before. Governments at each other's throats, wanting to destroy each other. Why do you think the nuclear bombs was created? They was created for this very moment. The destruction of mankind. Now, a lot of people will call me a kook and crazy. But I've been warning you for a year, and it has not changed. What's about to come is very sudden. We are leaving. You might not feel that right now, because Lucifer is going to use everything he can to convince you you're not. He will use God's own people, because they are asleep and will not wake up. But I'm here to tell you, do not take your eyes off that sky, just because the Feast of Trumpets left does not mean anything. It just means... The sudden destruction is very close. With the dividing of Israel, which Israel, I've always said, is your timepiece of where we are. While the world slept, this great evil will take place out of nowhere. Do not let it catch you off guard. If you're lost, trust in the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. It's all about the blood. I've stressed this and stressed this. But this event is still coming, and it's coming at 100 miles an hour. You are still in the last moments upon earth. Do not take your eyes off the prize of the rapture, because it's coming. A lot of us kind of figured it would not be Feast of Trumpets, because we, we probably would see it coming. Right now is a time when nobody sees it coming, and they probably won't. As I told you many times, when I seen it, it caught me off guard. And that's odd for me because I knew it was coming. Now, when it happened, I wasn't scared of it. While everybody else went screaming and running for the hills, I did not. I, the world is about to have a fear hit them like they've never had. That's why I tell you to be awake. 
Because when this event does take place, the world won't see it. I don't know when it happens. I do not know. I just know it happens very suddenly. It just comes out of nowhere. There's no warning. There's no warning from your media channels, no warning from your churches, no warning from... None of them will see this coming. None of them. When God finally lays the hammer down, the best way I can describe it, the world will be asleep when it happens. That's why he's had me warn you now for about a year. Coming up this month will be a year. There is a total eclipse coming up on the 14th of October. But remember, I kept telling you about a darkness in October. And there's a total eclipse that's going to be over top of America. It's not coincidence. These always happen before destruction. Always. These things have marked World War I, World War II, and other events, even 9-11. We're talking about a 9-11 event probably that's coming the size that's a hundred times worse than what that was. If we, With us playing a major role in dividing Israel down the middle, the destruction that's coming is like nothing you've ever seen. Everything that America is so accustomed to and used to is about to end, and it will end violently and very quickly. Everyone that's had these dreams and visions have all said the same thing. It's very sudden. People did not see it coming. How fast is it going to be here? It, it's getting here. It's getting here quickly. If Netanyahu does take this deal, which like I said, Ben Greer has already resigned his defense, Israel is imploding from the inside out while her enemies are licking their chops. God knows this. He knows what's happening. That's why I'm telling you, Israel is always the key to everything that's going on. A lot of you don't like to watch the news and everything, but if I suggest to you that any news that you keep up with is Israel, that's the timepiece of when we leave. I've been warning about it for a year. I've had people attacking, well, you've been saying this for a year. Uh, yeah, well, Noah said it for 150 years that the flood was coming. Now, we don't have 150 years. Because we're already seeing Israel be divided, and we're seeing them implode. That is prophecy. And God said, when you start to see these things start to take place, start to take place. Look up. It doesn't say... When you see these prophecies happen, in two or three years, these things were going to happen. doesn't say that. It says, look up. Your redemption is coming near. I will keep quoting you scripture. It is scripture that when you see these things, when you see Daniel 9.27, which we just did, the dividing of Israel, we're seeing Isaiah and Ezekiel. These things are being quoted straight out of scripture. Look up. I can warn you, scream at you, holler at you, but the rest of it's got to be up to you. These events are coming to play. The rapture is imminent. It is coming. Do not take your eyes off the ball. Steady the ship. Right now, I know Satan's in your head. Didn't happen. It's never going to happen. You're going to be here. You're not leaving. All kinds of different things. Trust me, he tries that with me. But understand what I'm telling you. He is coming. And he is coming for his children. It will be right before this sudden destruction happens. We even might even see the tip of it. We might be here as soon as the EMP hits. If it's from the rapture or World War III. But understand, when all this stuff happens, we are leaving right in the beginning of it. Do not fear. They're now saying there's a virus that's been unleashed in India that's killing 75% of Whoever gets it, they, anybody gets it, it's 75% chance of death. Not coincidence. We knew that was coming too. We've been talking about it for a year. We know all these things because God has warned us about what's coming. There'll be pestilences, wars like you've never seen. Like World War III, it's not like any war, brothers and sisters. It, a lot of people on here, you'll hear a lot of preppers say this is going to be a long fought war. It will not be. World War III will end in less than 48 hours. It will start and end in 48 hours. It will not take any longer. Once the first nuclear weapons exchange upon the United States and Moscow and Belarus and Ukraine, 
And it will happen, 100%. This does happen. A lot of people won't tell you that, but this is 100%. And I'm, I'm safe to say it because I know it because many of us have seen it. It will happen, and it does happen in the fall. That's when it takes place, 100%. We just didn't know what year. But it will happen in the fall. Is it this year? Don't know. I hope not. For everybody, I hope they have enough time to prepare, but it could be this year. But when it does happen, a lot of the population will be wiped off. Now, the people, the saved, the bride of Christ will be raptured right before the nuclear exchange. That's why I tell you, you want to get on the rapture train and get out of here when it happens. When World War III happens, it is very, it happens so quick, people just, they don't have time to run. They just, I'm sorry, they, they don't get no warning. There's no preparation. The media is not going to come on and give you so much time that you have to prepare. It, it, not, that None of that happens. It will be sudden, just like Paul said. It's sudden. Very quick. And before it's over, I mean, you people won't even know what hit them. And that goes for the people of Moscow and people in the Europe. It's the same there as it will be here. Now, God keeps this exchange to a limited amount. If he wouldn't, there wouldn't be a man or woman or anybody survive World War III. That's how many nukes do eventually hit the ground. But luckily... It's not a massive amount, but it's enough to take out a lot of the population. Their pride will never allow them to back down. Why do you, you see this right now? Look, every opportunity they've had to, to come to a peace, what's happened? Their pride escalates, escalates. The other day, for, for example, I know with you guys, a lot of you guys listening to me, you understand this about pride. You'll see them in the comments. Their pride overwhelms them that they have to be right. Pride destroys people. And we're seeing that 100% around the world. Their pride. NATO will not say, you know, give in to peace. They don't want peace. When one of them escalates, the other one just escalates more. If you cannot see this yet... Neither side is ever going to budge. That's why World War III is imminent, and it is going to happen. I told you that for a year. And we're seeing it. Because neither side is going to budge. That's why the nuclear war will happen, and it will take place, because they just cannot concede one to another. It will not happen. People's pride and their evil and their envy and their love for each other, for uh, their own selves has taken over the world. If you don't believe we're in the last days, get on Facebook and Twitter and get on uh, TikTok. People are lovers of themselves. Everything that Paul talked about in the last days, it's here. People love, they're, they're their own idols. They don't need idols anymore. They worship themselves. We live in the most evil world and God said it would be like that in the last days. This world, at the end of time, will be worse than any other time in the history of this planet. And that's saying something. Because the first time he destroyed it, it was ruled by 50, 60-foot giants. Eating people. And he's saying this time will be worse than that. Right there tells you all you need to know. Because no other time until now was man able to destroy himself. But he's built enough nuclear weapons to destroy the earth hundreds of times over. He don't even need God's uh, hand of destroying the world. He can destroy the world himself. And God knows that. And God's going to let them do it. Once the restrainer's removed after the rapture. See, this is the thing. The, the post-trib people and everything, they don't understand a restrainer. They don't get how that works. That's another thing that kills their theory. The restrainer, there cannot be a World War III while the restrainer's in place. Cannot be. The Bible said that's scripture. They don't read that part, which they don't read half the Bible. But once the restrainer's removed, then they can have their war. Cannot happen while we're still here. We have to be removed. We'll be in the bridal chamber getting our rewards when all this seven-year tribulation of hell upon earth is taking place. We've tried to tell other people, we've tried to teach them that, but they don't want to learn. As again, their pride will never allow it. 
That's what rules this world right now. Satan has it too, and that's where they get it from. Satan was very prideful. He still thinks he's going to win this war with Jesus. He will not, but he thinks he will. Just like America, Russia, and all them, they think each one of them is going to win, and they're never going to back down. You're seeing Jacob's trouble, the 70th week of Daniel, start to build with what's happening with Israel. So don't for one minute put your head down. And thank that Jesus ain't coming. Because let me tell you something. He's actually coming faster than you think. And it will happen suddenly. Just like I've always said. It will. You won't see it coming. So don't take your eyes off the prize. Keep getting people on the boat. Satan right now is going to try to every way in the world to convince you that it's over. That we're not going anywhere. Do not believe it. God told me many months ago. There's going to be a time come when everybody starts to put their head down and they're going to lose faith. For me to literally stare the ship, keep everybody on, and keep them awake. That's what I'm doing for you right now. Keep your eyes up on the sky. Do not take them off, especially now. Now is the time when this event probably will take place very soon. As I said, sudden destruction will come upon them. Just like Paul said, that's the next verse that's coming. Do not take your eyes off. Keep getting people on the boat. Keep on with the mission. Keep hitting the streets, telling everybody what's happening. Do not take your eyes off the ball. Not right now. Because the sudden destruction is next in line to come. The scripture has played out, people. The only thing that hasn't happened yet is is the sudden destruction. That's what's coming. The rapture will happen right before the sudden destruction. So we're there. Do not take your eyes off the ball. Because right now is when Satan wants you to not be looking. God give us the warning signs, which is the Revelation 12 sign. That's there for a reason. That's telling us the sudden destruction's coming. That the bride is getting ready to leave. That's all there. That's your final warning. That's your final warning. That's your warning that that's not a year from now. It's not two years from now. That's the warning. Keep your eyes upon the sky. We do not know the day and the hour. But we do know sudden destruction is coming. And we have prepared ourselves and we're ready to go home. So don't, for one minute, think that we're not going home. We are going home. And I'm going to keep on here every day until we are. Reminding you guys to keep your eyes upon the sky. Do not quit. This is still coming and it's still coming like a freight train. The news is still coming in like crazy. They just expelled all the American diplomats out of Russia. This is still happening and it's still rolling. The signs are not letting up. Keep your eyes on the sky. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber, here with the next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that specifically focuses on the data that points to the Rapture Resurrection. So, if content like this sounds good to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any new content that we have coming out. In today's report, we will continue to look for the Rapture Resurrection as we are heading through the days of all leading up to the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur, and then if needed, leading up through Tabernacles, the Feast of Sukkot. Now, I know a lot of you are upset because the Rapture Resurrection did not happen on the Feast of Trumpets 2023 like we thought. It made sense, but it didn't happen, so that day has officially been ruled out. But don't worry, because in this report, I have something that is much better. So just hang on, family. Now what I'm going to do is give you a list of seven points of why the Day of Atonement 2023 is such an incredibly high watch time. So let's get into it. Point number one. The birth of Abraham and the corporate birth of the nation of Israel alignment. Abraham, who is the first Hebrew, where the entire nation of Israel will come through his seed, he was born in 1948 BC, and Israel's rebirth took place in 1948 AD. Was that a coincidence? 
No, God is showing us something here. Let's continue. Point number two. Abraham was called out to serve the Lord at 75 years of age. Israel today is 75 years of age since 1948. My point here is Abraham was called out to face the Lord at 75 years old. And now since corporate Israel is 75 years old, will they be called out to face the Lord? Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Point number three. Abraham had to wait 25 years before he saw the promised miracle, the birth of the promised child, Isaac. And what happened with Israel? They were born in 1948. And then 25 years later, what happened? An incredible miracle. God gave Israel the victory during the Yom Kippur War of 1973. Point number four. When the Yom Kippur War took place in 1973, it was also a Jubilee year, which is another reason why God handed them this incredible miracle of a victory. Point number five. Since the Jubilee was in 1973, if you add 50 years later, where do we land? 2023. This year is a Jubilee year. Now, God handed Israel a miracle of a victory in the Jubilee year of 1973 because they were surrounded by all sides, outmanned, and hilariously outgunned. And now we are seeing Israel being surrounded by their enemies on all sides once again. And it's a jubilee year. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Is history about to repeat itself where God will step in and give Israel another miracle victory? Well, it just so happens that the war takes place in Ezekiel 38 when Israel is surrounded by all their enemies indicates that. And it happens at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. Like I said, you can't make this stuff up. Point number six. Now, this is where it starts to get really good. Listen up. In the Jubilee year, the last trump is not blown at the Feast of Trumpets. It's blown on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Yes, we still do a last trump trumpet blast commemorating the Feast of Trumpets, yes. But in a Jubilee year, it is not the last trump. Instead, the last trump is actually moved ahead by 10 days to the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur. Why did God do it this way? And is it in the Bible? I'll answer both of those questions in the Word of God. According to Leviticus chapter 25 verses 8 and 9 it states, And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. There's your last trump in a Jubilee year. Now I know that has to give you some hope right now. So we have not yet witnessed the last trump for the year 2023. In a Jubilee year, the last trump at the Feast of Trumpets falls into the position of the first trump because the Feast of Trumpets is the first day that kicks off the 10 days of awe, the 10 days of repentance, the 10 days of warning, and in our case this year, probably the final warning. And then on the 10th day, the final day of the days of awe, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, the last trump is blown. So think about it this way. You can't have a last trump without the first trump. And in the Jubilee year, the first trump is on the first day of the 10 days of all, the Feast of Trumpets. The last trump is on the last day of the days of all, the Day of Atonement. Now, I'm about to show you why this last trump is the actual last trump that aligns with the rapture resurrection event. So listen up. Listen to the words that God uses here. It goes on to say in verse 9, In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Wow, that is a pretty significant trumpet. That is a big, important trumpet. Are we looking at a typology of the trumpet of God? I think so, because if you read what's in the next verse, it paints a perfect picture of the rapture resurrection. Check it out. Leviticus 25, verse 10. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year, 
and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof what's this liberty being declared family it is freedom being declared for all the slaves and everybody who has debt now listen to this next part and listen closely it goes on to say here it shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession and ye shall return every man unto his family wow did you hear that some of you are not getting it let me explain this is an incredible declaration declared after this trumpet blast all debts are forgiven to everybody and anybody who's enslaved in any way shape or form they are freed to return to their family they are freed to return to their home and this all starts immediately after this trumpet blast on the day of atonement on the jubilee year called the last trump think about it everything i just said right there and how it's a picture of what happens to us at the rapture resurrection so you can just imagine all the people that were in this situation whether they were weighed down with a lot of debt just like we are all weighed down with all the sin wrapped up in our flesh or whether they were a slave for a long time just like we are a slave to the physical sin of our body and these slaves all missed their family they all wanted to go back home to their homeland to be with their family just like we are looking forward to being freed from the slavery of sin and going home to be with our collective family in the body of Christ with God the Father Jesus Christ in our homeland in heaven do you see all the parallels and typologies here think about it if God tells all the Hebrews this is what you do every 50 years you forgive everybody their debts and free all of your slaves and allow them to return to their families in their homelands if God tells them to do it this way then shouldn't he practice what he preaches shouldn't he follow his own laws and guidelines when it comes to canceling out the debt of all the sin that is still upon the flesh of every single person in the body of christ just think about it think of all the people that were slaves back then that had debt back then who were greatly anticipating the sound of that trumpet sound familiar anybody who was a slave knew as soon as that last trumpet went off as soon as they heard it that's why it says make the trumpet sound throughout all your land as soon as they heard it they knew in that moment they had instant freedom and were able to leave the slave owner's property and return home to the family for a big family reunion does that sound familiar do you think they were watching for that day do you think they were doing their math in their charts? You better believe it. I know I would have been. I would have been all over it. Just like right now, I am all over this. Huh? Come on, folks. Start connecting the dots here. What happens at the Rapture Resurrection family? One, all of our sin debt is canceled. And two, we are freed from the slavery of bondage of the flesh here on the earth. And right after we're freed, what do we do? We are reunited with our family, who is the body of Christ, when we meet Jesus in the air. Those who have gone on before us, they are freed as well. They're given the glorified bodies as they come up out of the earth from the grave. The dead in Christ rise first, and then we who are alive and remain are called up to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Big family reunion of all of us dead and alive, the collective body of Christ in the upper stratosphere of the earth and then we all go home to heaven when we're called up to his throne family are you getting this we are free from this world we are given glorified bodies free from sin we are no longer in the captivity of sin spiritually yeah we're sealed and we are free from sin there but the last time i checked we are all still dealing with the temptation of sin in the flesh so we are still a slave to the flesh but when we are changed from mortal immortality, we put on our new glorious bodies. We are no longer enslaved by the flesh. We have been set free. A jubilee year. Are you getting it? Are you starting to connect the dots here? So why am I looking at the Day of Atonement for the Rapture Resurrection this jubilee year? Well, 
it is a day where a whole lot of people are forgiven of their debt, a whole lot of people are set free from slavery, a whole lot of people are returned to their families, and a whole lot of people return home to their homeland. On this day, we see this big blanket of corporate forgiveness that just absolutely changes the world. I don't know about you, but that looks like a perfect picture of the day of the rapture resurrection to me. Now, check out this next part. Look what it says in Leviticus 25, verse 10. And it says, And it shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession. Key word here, possession. We who are the body of Christ are a possession. Possession to who? Possession to God, Jesus Christ. We are the purchased possession of God through Jesus' finished works at the cross that he is about to acquire when it is complete, when every member is sealed in it, and when every member in this body has been rebirthed with new physical glorious bodies at the rapture resurrection. Our Apostle Paul lays out how God purchases the body of Christ. It's the same transaction, but is divided up into two phases. In the first phase, we are saved spiritually through the works of the Holy Spirit. We are spiritually reborn and sealed and placed into the body of Christ. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, the day of the rapture resurrection. So we are spiritually sealed. There is no sin in our spirit. So that part of us is complete. But nothing's happened with the flesh yet. That happens with the second part of the purchase at the rapture resurrection, where every single spirit that he's acquired into the body of Christ over the last almost 2,000 years, whether they are dead or alive, they all receive new glorified bodies. And this will complete the second phase of the transaction. The best way I can explain this to you is like this. When you put something on layaway at the store, what do you do? You put a down payment on it and then take it home? No, you have to leave it there until you return to the store and finish the transaction and pay the whole thing off. Then you can take it home. Hello, that's what Jesus does. He returns to the earth. Curbside, of course, doesn't actually step foot on the earth completes his transaction and takes his purchased possession home back to heaven so we are the purchased possession of god and we're pretty much here on layaway here on the earth he owns us but he has not completed the transaction by wiping out all of our sin in our flesh as a result of completing this transaction we are given our glorified bodies and then he takes us home to heaven our apostle paul lays out this two-phase transaction in Ephesians 1 verses 13 14 in the first half of the purchase God purchases us spiritually the moment we believe by giving us his Holy Spirit rebirthing regenerating revitalizing our dead spirit Ephesians 1 verses 13 and 14 in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth the gospel of salvation in whom also that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And that completes the first half of the transaction. Now, what does it say about God completing the second half of this transaction with the resurrection, the glorification of our lowly bodies? Just continue reading that same verse, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. There it is. The second half of the purchase, the second half of the transaction. So you see, the Holy Spirit sealed within us is the earnest of our inheritance. Earnest means a promise of future performance, like putting earnest money down on a house. You put the earnest money down because you're saying, hey, I am going to purchase this home. And as a show of good faith, I will put down this earnest money as a promise of future performance and it's the same thing here god gives us the earnest of his holy spirit as a promise of future performance the glorification of our physical bodies key word like i said possession in leviticus 25 verse 10 where it says and it shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession and ye shall return every man unto his family now can you see why this upcoming last trump on the Day of Atonement 
it is such a high watch time for the rapture resurrection and just think for a minute about all the celestial signs taking place with the revelation 12 sign all of that and all the activities happening on the earth with the sdg summit coming up the seven year rescue plan agenda 2030 and everything else happening on the earth right now indicating that the seven year tribulation is about to begin think about that for a moment now i'm about to bring on my final point point number seven and it's going to be a doozy folks but before i do that like i said we don't have much time left so if you want to finish strong for the lord and make a difference in the body of christ your last and final impact into the body of christ before we go home please take a moment to check out this quick video and just listen to what the lord wants you to do and i'll see you right back after this quick break hey friends do you have great zeal for the lord are you excited about the upcoming rapture resurrection event are you interested in increasing the number of those who will be saved and will be caught up out of here when this event takes place and on top of all that being rewarded for this work at the bema seat judgment if that's you listen up we have been doing christian missions now for almost 10 years and we have built a very extensive worldwide network of missionaries teachers and evangelists pastors and people assisting them who are preaching the gospel of grace to new believers and are moving all the humanitarian relief aid and free bibles and everything as they continue to preach this gospel of grace throughout third world countries as you can tell everything is in place you don't have to do a single thing except provide the seed and just let me explain what we do we go into these areas of people who have never heard the gospel before and i'm talking about areas that are hard to reach remote areas villages jungles areas outside of the cities that society has forgotten about and forsaken we reach these areas and we provide food blankets clothing hygiene products humanitarian relief aid of all sorts depending on what's needed and once we get everybody up to speed with what they need i'll tell you what that changes the tune of a lot of people in these places when you provide aid to them they are very willing to listen to your message that will follow it and from this we have been seeing countless numbers of people coming to the saving grace of jesus christ and for these people we give them their own free bible and their own native language that our missionaries purchase locally in their countries or a king james for all the english readers and from this point we continue to teach them lead them and guide them moving forward are you ready to make a difference in god's kingdom today react right now to that pull in your spirit stop what you're doing because satan is going to distract you now trust me go to our website feedmysheeptoday.org the link is below there you can give by paypal credit card bank draft or just send your gift in the mail do you want to make a big impact right now but can't afford to do so i got a simple answer for you just become a monthly sustainer we greatly need more monthly sustainers and the great benefit about this position is you can set it and forget it now this whole thing is working on your behalf and you can focus on other things in the kingdom your seed will automatically be invested into god's kingdom on a monthly basis how many new believers can you say that you were responsible for for leading to the lord last year and giving a free bible to how would you like to be responsible for 36 new salvations this year and also give them a free bible well you can do that with simply ten dollars a month so that's there for you please consider joining our easy feed monthly sustainer family we would be so happy to welcome you in so friends all the links are in the description box below and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel feed my sheep today it's also our backup channel by the way there you'll be able to keep track of your investment in this great work thank you all so much for your much needed support May God bless you all. And now, folks, it's time for point number seven. And this point here is just a cherry on top. So my seventh and final point is this. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, falls on an extremely prophetic and significant date this year. And that day is September 27, 
927. It's back, baby. 927 is back. The Daniel 927 agreement, the covenant with many, the seven-year covenant that's supposed to transcend over the seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, is back. We thought last year that the seven-year tribulation was going to begin on 927 because the Feast of Trumpets started on September 27, 927, in 2022. But that was just a sign, once again, of what was to come the following year because that was so perfect when that happened last year remember all that we were so excited about it but it didn't work out but here we are now the day of atonement yom kippur starts on 9 27 and it's a jubilee year and i just laid out to you why the last trump that takes place on yom kippur is a far better candidate than any last trump on the feast of trumpets in any given year the covenant with many outlined in Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 is a seven-year agreement that transcends over the seven-year tribulation and the confirmation of this agreement, not the coming together of the agreement, the confirmation of it is being held back because of the presence of the man-child, the body of Christ, the hand of restraint. And what do we have going on right now with this S? DG Summit, this recommitment for seven years, Agenda 2030, where all these nations are coming on board, and especially even Israel now. Folks, it looks like to me they are currently putting it together, but it must be confirmed. It takes a long time to put it together and develop it, which is what they've been doing for many years, but it only takes like a second to confirm it. And I really do believe that the Antichrist is just waiting in the shadows to jump out and give it his stamp of approval. And the fact this is all coming together so perfectly right now during these days of all leading up to the Day of Atonement, which I just showed you why is a high watch for the Rapture Resurrection event. And the fact that we are seeing a projection of Christ's return in seven years in 2030, along with Satan's 2030 agenda to take full control of the earth amass an army and fortify the earth in preparations to face off of jesus in 2030 according to all this data and much more i would honestly say that this is it folks this is a year but we'll soon see what happens so there are your seven reasons my seven points why i believe the rapture resurrection is going to happen this year and the beginning of daniel's 70th week is about to kick off here at the day of atonement Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.